Shots fired lead to a manhunt on a remote New Mexico ranch. A bloody pickup truck reveals an axe attack. What's going on? And tribal payday. He tried to stab me. Means big trouble on the reds. 43,000 square kilometers of the Wild West. Spread out across three states. This is the largest Indian reservation in North America. And these are the Navajo cops. Navajo PD's Filbert Toddy races to an assault in progress at a known drug house. Any additional unit for assistance? I'm 1097, when you're off. It's going to be a while before backup gets here, so I'm going to have to be careful. How you doing, police officer? Richard, you okay? Yeah. Come out the side, Richard. Come on out. What's going on? Uh, that guy up there tried to stab me. Who? That guy, uh, Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. What was the whole reason why? Because, because of Stewart. Okay. Are you just here by yourself? You don't want to come in. Okay. Have a seat. Come on. The alleged victim appears to be under the influence. Security, okay? I want to secure your handcuffs. You understand? I, I didn't hurt nobody. All right, have a seat over here. My mom called you guys. Yeah, that's why we're here, because he said you yeah. almost got stabbed. I, I called her, and I said I was going to die. And Toddy suspects there may be someone else hiding in the house. He tried to stab me. And this is Thomas who? Tom. He, he lives right up there. Backup arrives to help secure the house. What? No, it's not. It's not clear. Police officer, anybody in here? No, there's nobody back there. Hey! There's nobody back there. Police officer, get up. Come on, buddy. They find a man hiding in the back, along with weapons. There's various hiding spots. An officer's worst nightmare, you know, places the individual can hide with a weapon. You know, there's a lot of paraphernalia, weapon contrabands laying around in plain view. Numerous weapons. Blunt weapons, edge weapons as well. All these indicators of illegal activity going on here. So it's a known dope house. This isn't a guy the victim says attacked him. It turns out that guy was picked up earlier today. So he's in custody right now. Uh, this guy here is just a friend. So based on what we gathered here today at this location, you know, he and his buddy are going to be going to jail tonight. Put your feet up in there. Water 45 million unit. So right now we got another call to be we had to respond to. Twenty-two kilometers away. A serious traffic collision on a rural highway. We have to cover like 30 miles to get out there. And this is a two-lane road. We're gonna have to get a lot of people off the road to get there. We're not too sure if it's an uh, accident with injuries or not, but we'll probably find out. Upon arrival, Officer Morgan tallies the destruction. One pickup truck total. A family of three, shaken but alive. 
and one cow. Dead. Open range ranching dominates large areas of the Navajo reservation. With no fences to keep them in check, livestock often wander right onto reservation highways. Yeah, this will be the same, same type of cow that was hit the other day. The owner will be the same. My daughter said her arm hurts, and then my son hurt, his back just hurt. OK, so you'll be needing an ambulance, right? Can we just? I can have them come out and have them get checked if you want. OK. 143, we're not. Wonder Rock, 143. The driver advised they need 55 to get their passenger checked. As she talks, the driver reveals a surprise for Officer Morgan. All right. We hit two of them. The second cow is found near the scene, badly injured. Its hind legs is broken. It won't be able to get it refixed. So the best result to do is to put the cow down so it won't suffer anymore. Some of us are cattle owners. We do you know, raise animals. To see them being hit, seriously injured, you know, it does, it does hurt us a lot. It does make us sad. We do conduct numerous investigations involving livestock and vehicle crashes. The result is you know, serious bodily injuries. Death may occur. The simplest thing is for beetle people to realize you know, they have to maintain reasonable care for these animals. It's sad to see though, know, animals and innocent people get hurt because of this reason. It is a uniquely rural issue that the Navajo police deal with every day. But big city problems are always lurking nearby. <laughs> 240 kilometers west of Window Rock in Tuba City, Arizona, Officer Perry Champagne is in the middle of what seems to be a routine traffic stop. It's a driver and a female passenger. He uh, rolled through the stop sign. A Cajun hailing from New Orleans, Louisiana, Officer Champagne moved to the reservation 20 years ago and married a Navajo woman. He is one of only five non-native officers on the force of 300. In the city of New Orleans, it's a bustling metropolis. Down here, laws are different, the people are different. But I actually love this place. This is uh, home to me for 20 years. Officer Champagne speaks Navajo fluently. It's fun enough. Going home. Yeah, it's fun enough. Whose is it? Mine. My first name. Let's go, both of you. 34, two, give me a second unit. Um, you may want to get one of the Delta units over here as well. Come here. A few kilometers away, Navajo drug and gang officer Gilbert Yazi gets the call. We just got a call from another officer who has a stop on a vehicle, has a large amount of drugs. So we'll see what he has when we get there. It's all about fishing. You know, I, I don't get time to get to a waterway and throw my pole in, and this is what I do for fishing. People are like, dude, you're weird. No, I'm not. This is my fishing hole. Holy cow, dude, this, I think there's a lot more in here. What do you guys have? He rolled through a stop sign and I'm like, I'm smelling, I'm sniffing, something's not right. And this is, this is wrapped in the plastic, inside this material, inside this bag. Look what he's got, man. I'm sure there's more to it. 
It looks like he's got more in the vehicle. Usually, if you want a good case, it takes a little bit of time to actually interview and get all the facts that you need on scene while it's still all fresh versus taking the guy to jail and try to interview him there. And you know, a lot could be held back there at the jail since he feels that he's already incarcerated. So in this case, more than likely, he's a dealer. It soon becomes clear that this isn't the suspect's first run-in with the law. What's his name? Donald S yeah. He was my neighbor for several years. Oh my gosh, he's some more county papers. Holy cow. It's a search warrant. Oh, this is a search warrant for his vehicle. Is that what that's for? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like two, three things going on right now. The initial traffic stop, the search of the vehicle, and also photographing the vehicle, and also interviewing the individual. The fate of these suspects may rest on the amount of marijuana in their possession. I'm saying maybe seven, eight ounces. Oh, wow. So. That's a lot for one person to consume, unless they're chicken chong. With the individual having this amount of drugs on him, he's, he's selling it. Um, no questions. Why are they seeing like this, all right? Well, I don't know what to tell you, but you got yourself in this situation. Well, I apologize, but you know what? just don't have a choice right yeah. now. Get your hands off of me. Ow! Hey, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. She got out of hand and she kicked me, see, trying to see. get up the steps. She just back kicked and it caught me in the wrong spot. It's OK, I'll, I'll live. Get that camera out of my face. I like doing what I'm doing. He gets it off the streets, and he keeps my kids and the other kids in his community safe. That's all that matters. This is what it's about. It's not about the stripes. It's not about the money. It's about the individuals, and it's about the families that this destroys. You know, he's charged with um, 410. Officer Kevin Hevel responds to a report of gunfire at a rural homestead. A female called in three subjects. This is up in Navajo. Navajo is about 30 miles from here, up north. It's kind of a desolate area. The female also advised that they have a weapon, so alert level has to be high. Normally, I try to go out there with another unit. When I called in, there was no units available. Right now, I'm the only one going up there. It's the kind of things we have to face. Officer Hevel is no stranger to adversity. At 24, the Iraq vet and father of three is the youngest officer on the force. We want to know what kind of weapon is involved. I don't want to step into a situation where I'm in the field area and these guys are using high-powered rifles. Then I'll be at a big disadvantage. Hello, my name's Officer Kevin Hevel. Are you reporting the disturbance that was happening? Yes, uh, my daughter called me and she said uh, my brother shot the kid's dog. Okay. And they shot my son's dog. Okay. They have a rifle. They have a rifle? Do you know what kind of rifle? I'm not sure. Is it like a 22 rifle? Probably. Okay. All right. And, um, there's three of them? Yes. OK. All right. Uh, they said they wrapped one of the dogs in a sheet, and I don't know where they took them. OK, but they're all at the house right now? Officer Jared Yazi arrives as backup. Oh, yeah. And then a there's a, a Yeah, a lot of junk outside. Yeah. What's the names again? Carmen Jack and Charles 
Charles is uh, on probation from prison, and I don't know what he's doing with uh, somebody that has a rifle. And my daughter, I, I don't know, they threatened her because of, I guess they came down to where we live, too. How far you guys live away from where they live? About a mile or less. Even if we go to your house, they're still going to see us? No, well, let's go to your house then, if it's, if it's just a mile away from yeah. where they live. The 14th here. Okay. I'm going to go brief them in real quick. Okay, hold on. More backup from Window Rock. All right, um, it's going to be about three and a half miles up. It's going to be a stone house. We're going to go meet up at the CP's house first. Okay. okay. 116, Window Rock. We have uh, two officers trailing me now, so it's a good thing. We'll come up with a game plan. One of the officers knows the location a little better. So we'll probably go off of his knowledge. We know now that they have a rifle. Could be a 22 rifle, but they're shooting the family dogs. 16 and rock out at the CP zone. 16, We heard a gunshot, but we didn't know what was going on, like exactly. Both dogs, they shot the white one first. And I over guess. at his house over there? No, in front of the cabin. Oh, in front of the cabin? Yeah, and then they took the pit bull and they put it inside the trunk and they um, they hauled both of them away somewhere. And then we were walking around, we were wondering why the dog was gone, so we walked over there and we walked around. Here we seen like blood on the ground uh -huh. and like some guts on, like right there. Okay. And here, um, my uncle, he was all, I was all, where's our dog that? And then he was like, they killed the sheep. And I was like, they didn't kill nothing. And then here I, I took his dogs away from him and I have them inside and he was like, you better not have my dogs, I'm gonna come back over here. And then I was afraid that he might come back over here with his rifle, so I called my parents. Okay, all right. Well, Navajo is thought to have uh, wealth by how much livestock he or she has. Some of these dogs are messing around with uh, some of the livestock and in retaliation, they shot back at the dog. The family feels threatened by the men shooting at the dog and shooting in the direction of the house. Situations like this, they could get really messy. I don't know if these guys know if we're coming, but if they do know we're coming, they have uh, some advantage over us. We're going into these guys' territory. They know where to hide, where to go, where to run. Uh, we just gotta adapt, overcome, and improvise in situations like this. A lot of that experience that I've had being deployed into Iraq uh, plays a role here in law enforcement when I come across situations like this. Uh, I'm on their turf. They know the area much better than I do. That's why my awareness level needs to be a lot higher. I think some of the officers saw something I didn't see. Looks like they're over there with their weapons. The other officers already have one man in custody. You guys shot some dogs. Huh? Huh? You got a report, you guys shot some dogs. They killed them at the livestock, that's why. They killed the livestock? Yeah. Talk to my unit. Uh, I saw another guy over here. Kenneth, is that your name? Come on out, Kenneth. You okay? Yeah. Step over here real quick. You have any, let me turn around, let me pat you down real quick. All right, put your hands behind your head. Hands behind your head. Hands behind your head. There you go. You have anything in your pockets? Yeah. Nothing? All right, I'm gonna detain you for a minute, all right? You know where Charles is at? Over the other house? I don't think this is a puppet. Because I'm not doing the killing everything. You're not doing the killing? All right, have a seat in here. You're detained.
Who's that? Herman. Herman. You guys are two. They live over the hill. Okay. We're heading over to where Jack and Charles could possibly be at. We have not located the rifle at all yet. I have to definitely assume that they are still armed and dangerous, and we have to treat the situation as such. Yazi and Hevel search the structures on the property. Looks like there's nobody inside. No sign of the other dog shooters. You can see the, the shed right here. Maybe there's another location. What's your name? Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Are you the only one? Are you the only one in here? What's your name? What's your what's your name? What's going on? Please. Have a seat over here. We got a call on you. You and Charles. You're gonna be arrested right now for criminal nuisance. It's empty. It's empty? Yeah. Have a seat in here. What kind of rifle was it? Do you know? It's a 22. Okay, that could be the weapon. But still, we haven't found Charles. I'm out here making sure that this guy, Charles, doesn't come back and ambush us. The sister said that Charles might be on probation. Usually people with warrants, probation, parole, they're the first ones to run. You know, they don't want to go back. We were looking to see if he uh, had run away. Uh, individual Charles, just like we had anticipated. Um, it doesn't seem like he's here. I don't know where he could have ran. It's uh, pretty much just sagebrush. We'd be able to see him if he was walking out in the distance. Um, Charles is not here. Let's make our way back. Officer Hevel calls off the search for Charles, the third and final suspect. The others will be taken in for booking. One, 42. It has been a wild start to what will be a busy week for the Navajo police. It's tribal payday. It's the first of the month they usually get paid, and we'll be getting a lot of calls this evening. The Navajo Nation employees getting paid. Then on the welfare and retirement, they get their money, they get paid. Flush with cash, many individuals manage to find trouble. You're going in for possession of liquor. One of these days, that will happen. You're going to be sleeping off, OK? No. You hear me? And as night falls, the Navajo Police Department remains on high alert. It's Friday night. It's uh, first of the month week, and usually it's one of the most busiest time of the month is when we actually get a lot of calls of uh, fights in progress, uh, drug disturbances, DUIs. So there should be a lot of you know, action going on tonight. Not far away, Officer Jefferson Lilly has made a traffic stop. I got his vehicle coming west on a 264. He's speeding. So pretty much uh, I got him on radar, pulled him over, and uh, started my investigation there. Uh, he kind of acted weird, you know, nervous inside the vehicle. So, you know, I just went along, we spoke with him, you know. He, Come to uh, get out of the vehicle, did a standard field sobriety test. Okay, you see the tip of my pen? You're gonna follow with the eyes only, okay? Alright. Okay, go. One, two. You smoke anything in the back? Mm -hmm. Right here. You can tell me now if there's any alcohol in there. 
No, it's not. Anything else besides that? No? Not that you know of. Okay. All right. The search is a pretty much standard procedure for all police departments. Well, it's someone driving under influence. Oh, there it is. 391. Marijuana. Bag. Small bag. And sometimes you turn up with something else altogether. After locating narcotics and a gun inside the vehicle, Officer Lilly radios for backup. He said that there was uh, marijuana in the vehicle, also the gun, yeah. and there was some alcohol in the vehicle. Now we're nation, you're required by law to notify the police officer if you're getting stopped that you do have a weapon. And if you do have a weapon, it either has to be unloaded or uh, stored in a safe place. Sometimes we come across, you know, people who are intoxicated, so, you know, if they have narcotics, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, what could they be into? They could either be, you know, selling drugs or, you know, even bootlegging. Holgate arrives and inspects the firearm to confirm that it's unloaded. But as soon as he picks it up, something is off. It's actually an airsoft pistol. It's a BB. But it looks like a real gun. If they brandished this, you know, this would consider to be a weapon because at the time an officer sees it, you know, if someone's pointing at an officer, they would respond back with deadly force. Checking that uh, that Gatorade thing. The Gatorade bottle. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't look like. Want to see? We urinated in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it to the police department. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the cops' library. Since the Navajo Nation is located within the states of New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona, Holgate has to be familiar with the laws of all three states. Now, since you have a valid Arizona driver license, it says any time that you're suspected of driving under the influence of intoxicated liquor or drugs, you will submit to a chemical test. Okay, which in this is going to be a well, breath well, test. Well, right. Right. So we're going to do that, and we'll put you on it. If you refuse to submit to a chemical well, test, your driver license will be suspended well, for one well, year. Well, and also, on top of that, you get an additional charge for failure to submit to a chemical okay, test. Well, okay? okay. Right. Do you understand, sir? Yes. It's a good night, you know. Got somebody off the streets again, but hopefully he doesn't do it, he learns from it or something, you know. Back in Window Rock, the Navajo Drug and Gang Unit is preparing for a weekend street gang operation. We'll be conducting criminal street gang suppression and consensual contacts within the Window Rock Police District. So we'll be uh, responding to the virus by mail with the weapon call comes up. Um, this came out of his uh, right pocket. Unlike most Navajo police officers, the drug and gang team, known as Deltas, aren't limited to a single district. Instead, they work with their uniformed comrades across the Navajo Nation. Their equipment includes AR-15 assault rifles and 12-gauge shotguns. Tonight, the Deltas will be working out of Window Rock and Fort Defiance. Uh, if contacts with any gang members or associates obtain all personal information, document any gang membership or affiliation and photograph them. And on a busy tribal payday, they'll be doing double duty, suppressing gang activity and helping out patrol units at a fight disturbance. We entered the house and yelled out, and he came out into the hallway, and he was put into custody. A little after 9 p.m., Gilbert Yazi and the Deltas are called out to backup patrol at a fight involving gang members in Blue Canyon. See what's going on at Pyrus is involved. This type of person can be violent. The suspect is well known to the Window Rock officers. In fact, he's already been arrested twice this week. How long ago did you get that brand on your back? About four years ago? This particular gang, they pretty much do brands on their hands, on their bodies, their front body, back body. 
Yazzie and the Deltas join Filbert Toddy and Eric Williams on the scene in Blue Canyon. Unfortunately, the suspects have scattered. We go out here all the time. By the time we come all the way out here, they usually get off into the brush, and all we have to do is just pick up the pieces from there. Yazzie attempts to track the suspects through the brush. 30, do you have uh... But the trail has gone cold. The Deltas head back to town. The uh, reason why I got into drug and gang enforcement units is a lot of our kids here uh, get involved in that. Most of the uh, gang members, some of them I pretty much grew up with back in the old days, but uh, they just got caught up in these gangs, and to this day, there still are. 10 kilometers away, Officer Filbert Toddy races toward the scene of an accident. Uh, there's a, a vehicle that's over power lines right now. We still have an individual inside the pickup truck. Uh, the power lines are still active. They're alive. If you can't shut down this whole highway. So probably the uh, driver of this vehicle up here is deep. Almost went head on with this vehicle here. So, side swipe, lost control, spun out. Bust into that, found that, found the utility pole over there. Fearing electrocution, rescue personnel can't help the driver out of the vehicle until the power is cut. Is he still inside? Is he, is he alert? Got two damaged utility poles and also dangling wires. The occupants of the other vehicle, a family of four, are lucky to be alive. Hey, how you folks doing? I'm also tied with you with our PD. You actually driver's license and a vehicle. Everybody okay here? You sure? Yeah, that's right. Keep going. Just to be sure? Well, we'll have an ambulance check you all out, just to be sure, okay? okay. Uh, because, you know, some of these, extent of these crashes, you know, you just never know, may never know because, you know, adrenaline kicks in, and you'll start feeling the effects later on, okay? So, go ahead and have them come over. Just going real fast. <laughs> And the only thing I could do was just get out of the boat, get out of the way, get back into this lane over here, but it was, apparently it was too late. He was in the wrong lane coming at us anyway. He was supposed to be in this lane over here. I floored my gas pedal to try to get away, and apparently it wasn't enough, and he caught the rear end of my left fender there. Right now, the driver, he's trapped inside his truck. We have to get him out, you know, as a police officer. You know, it, it kills you. You know, our first instinct is run in there and help the person out. But we have to wait until it's safe. OK. Then Officer Toddy gets the go ahead. It's safe to approach the vehicle. Watch your eggs there, partner. What's your name? Dennis. OK, Dennis. Watch your eggs, man. <laughs> 62 years old? 52. Okay. Don't worry about your food, come on out. We're gonna get you checked up, let's go, come on. You heard him anywhere? No, 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 no. Once the driver is extracted from the vehicle, Toddy discovers the real cause of the crash. The uh, suspect vehicle, the one that caused this whole collision deal. Back seat, and plus another empty bottle or partial empty. It was obviously after initial contact, you had the appearance. Such speech, incoherent. The outcome of this one is one guy's going to be going to jail, which is going to be very, very good. And obviously, his vehicle's disabled, so he's not going to be able to transport, or drink, and drive again. So terrific thing about it, and no one got hurt. So family's going home safely. Family of four, no injuries. So. That's a blessing. Back in Tuba City. Oh, rats. There he is. I got him. I have 37 in sight. He's over there. Officer Lucy Dan pursues a suspect. Where's he at? 
What are you doing? Put your hands behind your back. Get down. I said get down. Out this way. He was running when I saw him, so. Do I have anything in your pockets that I should know about? Got marijuana. He, the, you know, I asked him if he had anything on him. This is what he took out of his pocket, so. He's going to be arrested, and we'll go and book him now. Four forty-one to one hundred five. He did run and cooperated as soon as I found him in the house and brought him out. Most people are respectful to the female officers. If you treat them right, you talk to them right. They're very cooperative. As far as the public goes, as a whole, I think we are treated very well. I enjoy my job. I don't think I'd be here if I didn't enjoy it. This is my office here. I get to go out anywhere I want to in town. I'm not stuck in one place. While on patrol, Lucy gets a call for an emergency response south of town. 441 to bomb 19, code three. We have a, a report of a, a guy that was hit over the head with an ax. Officer Lucy Dan arrives at the scene of the axe attack. A pickup with its windows smashed in. The truck bed is soaked in blood. Lucy learns that one suspect is already in custody and that a female has been seriously injured. All we know right now is that the individual was hit with an ax. Is she over there? We're gonna go where the suspect and the lady were, were found. The victim is loaded into an ambulance, unconscious and unable to give an account of the attack. What happened? What's the scoop? But an Arizona highway patrolman tells Lucy that there are several witnesses at a nearby trading post. And I told him to stick around there because it sounded like they witnessed it, quite a bit of what, what happened. I'm going to go to the Thank witnesses you. over here that are at the junction. OK. Get statements from them. Careful. 431 has one in custody. Hi. There's the man back there. You see where the, um, the little booths are? Yeah. Okay, we'll check them. I have a report of one uh, a male individual that's laying in the ditch over here. <laughs> All kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, Got some people in custody. And we keep getting. Reports of another, there he is right there. Somebody laying over here saying he was involved in an accident, so I'll check on him. You hurt anywhere? Wake up. Sit up, Navajo police, wake up. Are you okay? No, I'm all right. You got blood on your hand, can you sit up? Make sure you're okay. Yeah. What's your name? Wayne. Just for my safety, I'm going to handcuff you. OK, come on. Hey, hey. Come on. <laughs> the scene is spread out. We've got things going on at the parking lot, and then the vehicle is across the road. As far as we know, we have two victims over here now, so. And he doesn't want. He's not really saying what happened. Axe victim, he's over there. As the cops work the confusing three-part crime scene, a bizarre story emerges. Apparently, the female victim was a passenger in the truck as it left the trading post. It came across the intersection yeah. and barely missed like an RV type thing going this way. Yeah. And he ended up over kind of in the ditch or yeah. whoever was driving. And it did a 180 right here. And as it was turning, that's when the lady came out of the truck, and oh. it went right over the top of her. And the whole time, she wasn't moving at all. I thought she was dead. The lady fell out right there, where all the blood is. And the rear tire drove over her. The vehicle eventually stops, and one of her passengers throws her into the back of the truck, and then they take off. 
He got her in, they went down there and went down that dirt road and where they went, I don't know. But then we seen her driving the truck back that way. That's so far the story. This is one of the crazy ones where you don't know what's going on. The guy that I have, he was uh, actually a passenger when this vehicle spun out and ran over the lady. So he's involved too, so he's just not saying. Lucy Dan transports her suspect to the jail in Tuba City. I'm going to take you to the jack, the gates. Hey. All right, I'm going to book this one. guy and uh, spend eight hours here sober up, and he can head home tomorrow. But not before he puts a death curse on a member of our camera crew that's supposed to kill him in 333 days. 333 days. Three, three, three. We're not sure what started the fight or who bashed in the windows with the ax. Fortunately, the woman is OK. I, I still don't know how she ran herself over. A lot of times, we don't get the, the right story, or it's either exaggerated, or we just don't get the whole thing. Yeah. 6 PM. Officer Tiffany Tallman gets an urgent call. A man is allegedly trying to run down his neighbors with a tractor. And this is a male subject harassing them in the area. Careful. It's like multiple callers on this one person that's harassing different people in the area. It's just I need to get more information. It's a dispatcher's job to get all that information for us what I need to prepare for, and if I need any more assistance, like backup. Officer Tallman is a seasoned veteran, 14 years on the force, over 5,000 arrests. Hey, stop, stop. Get on the ground. Get on your stomach. Get on your stomach. The caller said that she'll be waiting in the roadway in the area and give us more information. Hi, how are you guys doing? According to the victim, the suspect pinned her up against a metal drainage pipe with his tractor. And he like got all crazy and said, that's mine, you and all this. And he started uh -huh. going towards me with the tractor. Mm -hmm. And I was just looking at him and he goes, I'm gonna kill you, move. He kept coming closer. And are you he, okay? Do you need to go to the hospital? No, I'm all right. Looks like the neighbor came over here and threatened the lady with a tractor. He's saying that she took some property from him. I will be back over, OK? And um, she says it was given to her. Either way, you don't use a tractor as a lethal weapon. As Officer Tallman goes to question the suspect, she is joined by Officer Perry Champagne. So what we're going to do is we're trying to find out where he lives at and We'll go ahead and meet with the, the suspected or reported party. Right now, we're, we're looking for his residence. There he is. Park it! Park it! He went over there and he pushed her with the tractor. Oh. So she said she's not okay. injured. Okay. <laughs> hey. Mr. Watson, how are you doing? Yeah, all right. Cheers. Hello, hello, friend. Oh. Apparently, one of the family members over here had given an item to the lady next door, and Jimmy was saying that it was the wrong item that was given. No, no, so who does it belong to? Uh, B.I. That's mine. That's yours? Yeah, it's mine. So did I... they take the wrong one? Yeah, no, that's wrong. I don't, that, that's mine. I'll take it over here. Uh huh. Because she says she was given one by mm -hmm. the grandmother. So it was miscommunication? Yeah. OK. He has a lot of problems with people taking stuff and stealing things from his lot. And he was just really upset. And that's why he went over there by himself. 
This kind of thing happens a lot. There's no private property on the reservation here. The land belongs to the tribe, and each family leases some land from the tribal government. A lot of the families live in close proximity with each other, and that does cause disputes amongst them, and sometimes those disputes can last for generations. Mr. Back. Watson. Mr. Watson, she said she's pretty, she's upset, you know, and she said that you pushed her with a tractor and you made a threat that you would hurt her. Okay, you can't do that. Okay. All right? Okay, okay. I understand people aren't supposed yeah. to steal stuff, but you can't threaten people and you can't, you know, pin people against anything with your tractor uh -huh. or use that to intimidate people. Okay, okay? you scared them. All right, you can't do that, Mr. Watson. Okay. All right? Thank you. So um, I am going to arrest you, but I'm going to let you go back to court. So right. I'm going to cite and release you. Uh -huh. All right? Because I don't think, you know, you'd be okay in jail. I don't want you to be in jail. But you still have to come back for court. Okay. Okay? If you fail to go to the court, you're going to get a warrant for your arrest. And today's date, court, I'll go. Huh? Yes. Okay, so just sign it, saying that you acknowledge that you, you got that, and we will be leaving. Just stay away from them, okay? And if you have a problem with somebody taking something from you, you call us, all right? Don't take matters into your own hands. So we're not going to take them in today. Tuba City Jail is overcrowded, and um, we have to prioritize our arrests. If he was somebody who was more violent and a threat to the community, I'd be taking him in. Like I said, if you have a problem with somebody, call us, okay? Come over. We will come over. He still got arrested, but um, he was cited and released, and he's just gonna have to go into court um, another date and time. He can explain that to the judge why he did that. You know, a machine like that can, can do a lot of damage. It can hurt someone. And the other thing to consider is, you know, he's not a bad person. It's just living out here is hard for some people. I'd hate to see uh, somebody's emotions get the best of them and, and make a, a tough choice that they, they can't go back on. In this case, uh, hopefully they could put it behind them and move on with their lives.